Yes, hello, thanks guys. Here I am at the Starlink Battle for Atlas preview event. I'm here with Lauren, and he is going to play through the exclusive Gamescom demo, right, that we've got right here. Uh, so can you just explain to people who don't know much about Starlink what's going on? Yeah, so um, happy to be here with you today. So uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas is an open world action adventure game where uh, you build your starship right on top of your controller. So uh, let's start uh, by doing that. Sure, yeah. So the first thing we got here, uh, our mount connected to the, to the controller, we're going to pick up uh, a pilot. So all our pilots um, have very uh, um, uh, different abilities mm -hmm. and uh, that can be used in combat. So for example, here, Miss and Rana can trigger a noble strike from the mothership, the Equinox. A judge can slow down time for everybody but him. Um, so great to slide them between bullets and flank the enemies. And, uh, and Shade, for example, here we're going we're gonna to use her, um, can uh, make any ship disappear completely. Uh, she's like, a, in her story, she's a, a famous uh, a smuggler in the Atlas star system. So you're going to slide in your pilot like this on the mount, and immediately uh, you're going to see your pilot getting ready to jump into action uh, on the screen. So Shade here. Right after that, you're going to want to equip uh, a starship. Uh, so, for example, we've got a different starship here today. They all have a different class. So we've got a high energy, uh, the ones that provide a, a lot of energy for your, uh, for your weapons. So, for example, Zenith uh, is one of those ships that gives you a, a lot of energy for your weapons. Um, we got uh, rocket, uh, the rocket class, like this one belongs to this class. So uh, they go extremely fast and especially in a straight line. So great to cover large distances uh, or even in the battle to just uh, uh, navigate in between your enemies before they can, uh, before they can attack you. Uh, we got the tank class like this one. Neptune belongs to this uh, tank class. Uh, can take a lot of damage, uh, adds a lot of armor, but it's a bit on the slower side. Uh, so you got to compensate for that in your, in your uh, gameplay style. Um, and we got uh, Lens, actually uh, a ship that were uh, uh, making playable for the first time, um, so I hope you you tried it. <laughs> and uh, this one belongs to the performance class. So those ships combine a good balance between speed and handling, making them extremely agile during combat. So let's connect this one. And if I say wanted to choose the wings off this one and put them on that, everything's interchangeable, right? Yes, absolutely. So right now those uh, two wings here are providing me with more handling. But if you want to have, for example, let's say more defense on this ship, what you can do is you, at any time you can remove those wings and uh, steal the wings from one of your uh, starship here, like Zenith. And those ones, their shape in the kind of indicates that they provide you with more defense. So when you connect them here, they will appear instantly in game and you'll see your stats that are changing uh, accordingly. The cool thing is that you can even stack up wings on wings. So if you're like, hey, but you know what? I like having more defense, but I don't like losing the handling I had before on that ship. So you can just decide to just add those wings there onto those defense wings. And then you have a ship like this that is wider. That will also be great to ram kind of enemies um, as you're navigating through yep. the planets. Okay, well, let's jump into the mission. I think you've, yeah. you've put us in orbit. All right, let's do that. Uh, you know what? One more thing that I'm going to do just before going is equip myself with some weapon. Those are important. Yeah, yes. Have some weapons. <laughs> so I'll start with my uh, Shredder Gatling that I'll put on this side for now. And uh, I'm going to use my Levitator missile um, on, the, on the other side. So right weapon, right trigger, left weapon, left trigger. Uh, Shredder Gatling, great mid-range, high rate of fire weapon, very versatile weapon. And uh, Levitator puts the, some of the enemies in a stasis state. So uh, it will float them and immobilize them for uh, a, a short amount of time. Let's jump in. So the mission uh, we're on to right now is uh, about meeting uh, a prospector named Eli to discover more about the Forgotten Legion and who might be running them. Uh, so we travel to this planet that we call Haven and uh, we're going to land on the surface of Haven right now to go meet Eli and see uh, what else he has to say about uh, the Forgotten Legion. Okay, now in terms of the planets that we're, we're going to get to see in the, the final game, all of them are fully explored, but like, you, can, you can basically fly all the way down into them and then around and explore different aspects of them while you're there. Uh, absolutely, that's, that's, um, 
But something that was super important for us in the team is that feeling of freedom. Uh, so it's a big, it's a huge open world, uh, open star system uh, with like seven worlds that you can explore completely uh, freely. Uh, some, um, it has three sectors uh, with different level of, uh, of challenge and uh, some of the planets, if you try to go there right from the beginning, for sure they're going to be, uh, they're going to have higher uh, level enemies, so it might be uh, more challenging for you. But you can, if you want to, if you want to try it, yeah, you absolutely can. So I'm on my way now to meet uh, Eli and uh, one thing you've noticed, so we transitioned from space to the planet. I can fly uh, in the atmosphere of the planet and uh, if I want also I can decide at any time to, um, to land up like this. So I turn off my uh, flight engine. The cool thing is that uh, this planet here has some uh, water on it and um, above the water my ship is actually going to get a little uh, boost of speed so I can even use the the wider canals as, a, as kind of highways on this particular planet, yeah. It's like you're gonna see when I go on it, I, go, I just go a little bit faster. I know there are multiple people on each planet that you can go and do different like, missions for and things like that. Yeah, so um, the prospectors, the, the industrial prospectors and the scientific expedition are, are, are trying to, um, they have different goals, like the prospectors want to establish themselves on those worlds and uh, the expedition uh, want to study the life, uh, the, the abundance of life in, in Atlas and how it's connected to the presence of Electrum, this really rare mineral that we can find on those worlds. and. Um, and so you'll meet different uh, different uh, characters of them on different on different planets. Yeah. Let me just check. So we're looking right now. Uh, this gameplay mechanic there is, is the find mechanic. So we're looking for the rare mineral that uh, Eli uh, wanted us to find. So it appears to be this one. So let's extract it. We got ambushed by some uh, uh, enemies right there. So call them the imps. So you can I can. They can also latch on my ship like this, so I can use my levitator to get rid of them. I should probably switch to a more uh, uh, area of effect weapon, right. <laughs> which is going to be uh, even more efficient to take care of them. So this is the neat thing that when you're playing it, at any time, you can just pull your weapon off and swap it for anything else that you've got in your inventory, right? Absolutely. And right now, so uh, we're still at the beginning of the game, so when I remove a part, you'll see that it pulls the game instantly. Uh, but later on in the game, if you want, you can turn that option off uh, in, the, in, the, in the menu, so making it absolutely seamless to right. swap weapons and different and wings. Okay, so um, what we have to do now to discover more about the Legion, Eli has actually given us a clue of how to discover more about where are the Legion coming from. Right. And uh, his, 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 um, his clue to help us is to go hack a drake. There's lots of drakes that crashed on the planets of Atlas and you can always hack them to discover Legion position. So that's his recommendation of what to do now. So we're going to go and do that. Uh, so I've just accepted the mission, but before going what I'm going to do is uh, I want to go faster uh, to reach this destination So I'm going to reconfigure my starship a bit um, Let's do it. Uh, So I'm going to remove this one here and um, I want to go fast So I'm going to uh, use this ship here that we call Nadir. Uh, it's an outlaw ship It's actually a uh, shades ship so you can see it has some like a, a paint chips uh, uh, on it uh, The wings are asymmetrical. Uh, there's a skull in the back and the wing are actually in the front So the outlaws don't do anything like the other pilots so this is why their ships are like that uh, so I'm gonna connect this ship here and um, I'll take those weapons for the moment and maybe uh, I'll, uh, I'll change the actually you know what I'm gonna uh, yeah no I'll keep those weapons for now so I'll attach this one and uh, and this one yes I'll do it even in game so all right nice. And even if we didn't want to play this particular bit with Shade, we could have swapped another character. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you well. know what? You're absolutely right. Let's do it. Let's change it right now and replace Shade with... Uh, do you have a favorite character you'd like to try? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't tried... Levi? Levi, yeah. All right. So let's have a go. Levi, here. yeah. Let's hop. And Levi is going to pilot Shade's ship. Because why not? You know, yeah, it's ex allowed. exactly. It's up to you. Let's be on our way. So when you go in the in the storm, you can see that like the, uh, the environment changes. You can't see the sky anymore, and that's really what the Forgotten Legion are doing to those planets. They are extracting the maximum amount of electron that they can uh, to try to refine it into Nova, and it's destroying those worlds in the process. 
So we're not going to take care of the extractor right now, but we could also decide to just stop and, and destroy this extractor to restore uh, this planet and stop the progress of the Legion. We also have in the game uh, those, I was talking about it a bit earlier, but those big towers that we call Warden Spires. And um, uh, Carl Zian, one of the pilots of the, um, of, the, of the team, he belongs to the Expedition faction, but uh, he decides to join the team early on, uh, will tell us more about the world, uh, the function of those Warden Spires, what he thinks at least they're being used to. Right. Let's see if we, can actually, uh, if we can actually reactivate this one. So they all have uh, different, uh, they all need different en energy to be reactivated. So this one, for example, here needs some uh, fire and ice energy. So let's try to do that. So I'm going to remove my levitator and I'm going to use my flamethrower here. And uh, we, need some, uh, we need some ice power. So I'm going to use my health storm uh, weapon. You can see some of the weapons also have uh, LEDs in them. So when you connect them, they will turn on. E each of the ships also have a... Uh, uh, different uh, uh, engine color. So this one is an outlaw ship, so it has a, an orange uh, engine, but the starting one has blue engine. So just something that makes your, uh, your starship more alive. Mm -hmm. And even when you're done playing and you have it on your shelf or by your night table, it's like, well, wow, that's the ship that you've went into an adventure with. There's also, like I was talking about, some old runes that belong to former civilization. So you can see some of those here. Um, those ones often are protected by legions uh, or planetary outlaws. And um, they also have like vaults that you can uh, open uh, to discover their treasures. There's also a lot of shipwrecks that you can discover like this. They often have resources uh, there that you can gather. And here we see, some, uh, we see some of those planetary outlaws that are fighting with... Uh, who are they fighting with actually? Uh, they're fighting with uh, some, of the, some of the expedition factions. And all of those things are just dotted around the world, so if you're not doing the main missions, you can just fly around the planets and, and just go and discover stuff whenever you want, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the beauty of it, is to see all those systems interact together and, uh, and decide to take part of it or, or, or focus on, on the mission that you're currently doing. It's really uh, uh, the player's choice to decide. And so now, so basically what uh, the, the, the Starlink Initiative team is, is doing, they are reporting to Eli that they need, a, uh, they need a more power to be able to process the origin of the signal of the, of the Legion. Uh, but the refinery right now is doing uh, everything it can, so uh, Eli is asking us to go retrieve an ore processor to be able to uh, increase the output of Electrum of this, um, uh, of this refinery. Some pretty speedy flying. Yes. <laughs> if, I, if I wasn't sure, I said you might have done this before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's very fun to play, you know, with the jump, the retro thruster of the ship to jump to avoid the obstacle or to quickly dodge left and right while you're navigating super fast. So here, as we're about to arrive to the place to retrieve this ore processor that Eli wants to upgrade the refinery, we're encountering a new enemy that is called the Fire Giant. Uh, so Sage, the artificial intelligence of the Starlink Initiative, is recommending us a weapon that we should use. So I have Alstom here, uh, but I have a heat weapon here, the flamethrower, and it's not going to do any good against this fire giant. So I'm going to remove it and swap it for my frost barrage. So we're going to go with a full-on uh, cold energy loadout. And we're going to try to take uh, this enemy down. Okay. I might die. No, <laughs> okay, well, let's see how it goes. I did notice the great thing about playing it earlier is even though... You know, the weapons are, are telling you what they are on the screen. They're also sort of color coded. So yes. all the, the ice ones are obviously blue and the fire ones are, are red, which makes it much easier for you to just grab one while you're playing and slide into the right slot. Uh, yes, absolutely. So you can also, uh, against this enemy, we can use another feature uh, of the game, which is the uh, active shield. So um, all the ships have this ability, and basically what it does, so I'm just going to stay hidden from the fire giant while I take care of his goons quickly. And uh, so what it does is that uh, it protects your ship uh, momentarily, momentarily, hard to say, <laughs> um, uh, with the shield that you can see here. So that's great, so again, that's great against the attack of this uh, fire cyclop here, because you can see he throws a big fireball to me once in a while. But the cool thing about active shield is that if you time it right, uh, right at the moment when the projectile arrives to you, uh, you can fire it back to the, to the enemy who sent that to you. So there's a little timing gameplay there that is fun to do when you're in combat. 
for example, here I didn't succeed. And they also will also have that, that boost function that we've been seeing you use a lot as well. So you've also got your shield and your boost. Like. Exactly. It's really a, it's good to do a, in a fight like this, for example, because I can, uh, if I'm a bit under pressure, so I can uh, quickly escape here, um, recover, let uh, the shield of my ship recover, gain a bit of time. Uh, that's something that really uh, this ship uh, and its class offers. I can also use uh, my pilot ability here, so it makes my ship uh, kind of like super powerful for a limited amount of time and I can electrify the enemies when I contact with them like this. Maybe I'll be able to finish this fire giant like this. Yes, we got him. Nice. <laughs> First time, see? <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we still have one of his goons there. Okay, perfect. Uh, the enemies from time to time will also drop those uh, chests that can contain some more mods um, for your, to improve your weapons and, um, uh, and starship. There's also those canisters that you can grab uh, and throw at the enemies. So uh, even if you don't have a particular weapon, there's canisters with different type of energy all over those runes. So fire one, stasis one. So you can still experiment with what a weapon could do, even if you don't have that weapon. So this one hasn't seen us for the moment. So perfect. Let's go inside uh, this vault. So to enter those vaults, you got to destroy those corrupted Nova crystals. Um, but you got to use the opposite energy element for it. So right now we have an ice loadout and the corrupted Nova crystal is, um, is an ice form. So I'm going to use my flame tower to go in. All right, then we got to open this door. Get in. There's a lot of electron crates there that we can destroy to get the electron. And here's the ore processor we need to bring back. I'll just destroy those crates to get their resources. Also, when you explore those old um, uh, ghost town, Eli will tell you more about the story of those worlds and. Uh, and um, and particularly from the prospector uh, perspective, from pros from the prospector perspective, but also from his own perspective. <laughs> and that's a cool thing also with the game is that um, you can play with any characters at any time. So and they have very different personalities. So when you do that, you'll discover uh, uh, the event of Starling from a total different perspective. And each one of the characters also is going to have one of their special abilities. Right? Yes, absolutely. So it, it not only it enriches. Uh, um, your narrative uh, experience of the game, but it also uh, it, it adds a playstyle that you can integrate into your uh, into your way of playing Starlink. All right, so we brought back the old processor to Eli, so let's give it to him. So it will uh, it's going to allow Eli to um, update the refinery. So now the refinery is going to be able to output even more Electrum, uh, which is going to help us uh, in our goal uh, to uh, to uh, to reach a lot of Electrum to be able to continue uh, the mission. And now we have enough Electrum to uh, analyze the artifact, which is going to uh, give us more uh, intel about the Legion. Perfect. And that's, that's, that's it for our demo today. I Amazing. I hope you had a good time. It was great. Uh, it's really fun playing with all the, the ships and everything and changing it all. I think we should say we've been playing all of this on, on Xbox One mm -hmm. at the moment. We played the Switch version earlier, and the Switch version does have an exclusive cloud figure and ship, right? Yes, absolutely. On Switch, you can play with Fox McCloud. Uh, and the R-Wing. Uh, it's an exclusive experience to the Nintendo Switch. You can play the whole game with Fox if you want, discovering all the, uh, the game from his perspective. And, um, and yeah, and you can play also with a special ability. It's fully integrated into the game. It's more than just a guest in Starlink. So um, there's also some special uh, um, story mission with, uh, that are dedicated to Star Fox, where you'll discover more about uh, why is Fox McCloud here and who is he after. And, um, and yeah, it's a lot of fun to play with. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks very much. That's uh, our preview of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Uh, if you've got any more questions, then fire them at us in the comments. Uh, but for now, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>